Hi guys, can you all hear me okay? Great, okay. Um, my name is Murray Whitaker. Um, welcome to Tips and Tricks and Pitfalls in Publishing Wide. I just wanna tell everybody that this isn't really a course to tell you how to publish wide. It's just telling you that I have put a lot of um, books and eBooks up to publish them wide. And these are the, some of the things that happened along the way. So I've been doing this in, for about um, 12 years off and on, and now I work for a, a um, medium-sized publisher, and we, we do have wide distribution with, um, with all of our books. Um, so I'm a publisher, I'm a published author, and I'm also a co-director of Superstars Writing Seminars, which takes place in Colorado every February. Um, okay, so what we're going to cover here, make sure, okay, there we go, okay, so we're going to cover like some quirks and oddities, um, some of the things that I've recently added to this talk um, are like the interaction between Amazon and other, um, other like aggregators or other, other ebook sources and stores when you're uploading. Um, we'll go over some pre-order tricks, hardcovers, um, the new KDP hardcover versus um, Ingram Spark hardcovers, aggregators, um, some talk about libraries and sending your stuff to libraries, and then hopefully we'll have some time um, for some Q&A, <laughs> hopefully. Okay, so um, what I'm about to tell you again, are just from my experiences. I urge you as part of your, pu your publishing model to go ahead and go out and do the research and the due diligence when you hear something from me or another professional that might actually help you in some way if you're wanting to pursue a, a different um, type of publishing. What I'm about to tell you is not like straight from the aggregators or straight from like any bookstore, um, but it's what has happened like when I'm working with these different, um, these different platforms. So, um, how many of you here use Ingram Spark? Like a lot of you or no? Okay, so um, I want you to know first off that something I found out is that when you use Ingram Spark, you can actually upload eBooks there too. And this um, changes, you know, the way Amazon interacts with your books, of course. But um, I, like to, uh, I like to distribute to to Ingram Spark, and one time we um, uploaded a bunch of books to Ingram Spark, and then I needed to take one title down so that we could put that particular title in KU, like KDP. And um, whenever I did, I got um, like emails and everything telling me that everything was okay, and then um, for some reason, Apple. Like, we had um, uploaded the books and, and clicked the button to publish to Apple, too. And for some reason, Apple didn't listen to Ingram. And I've found this quite a few times, that, that um, Apple doesn't like to listen to Ingram. And sometimes when you use an aggregator and publish to, to Apple through the aggregator, it doesn't come down right away. And of course, if you know anything about KU, this caused all kinds of problems. Um, so what I really feel like you should do is probably um, publish to, you know, to Amazon Direct. Don't, don't use an aggregator when you publish to, to Amazon. Um, but, so this, this particular um, incident, RVA, um, I sent her an email and I said, hey, this one title is up for wide distribution and what I really wanna do is put it up on KU. And so she said, okay. And she went over to Ingram Spark and for some reason, um, after she sent me the email that she had done it all, then it came back that she, I got an email that said that all of our print books, like the hardcover and the print books were taken down. And so I got with her and I was like, what are you doing? Well, turns out, and I mean, this was my mistake for not telling her, but when you publish your books wide through Ingram, Ingram Spark, you don't have to worry about the trade paperback and the, um, the hardback editions. What KDP cares about is the um, the ebooks? They don't really care about you know how many how many editions of print you have out with the same title. So, if you're going to take a book down from wide distribution and go back and do like a 90 day stint in KDP Select, you don't have to take your your um, print books down too. Just your just your ebooks. So that was like a learning curve for her, and it was like my short sightedness for not telling her and just thinking that that she already knew, but. Um, yeah, so that was a lesson learned there, and that was not a good day because, of course, 
Ingram, you have to pay the re-upload fee and, and everything, so yeah, not, not a banner day. Okay, tip number three. Oh, whoops, I think I missed one. Back, tip two, nope. Okay, tip number three. Um, this one, oh, I'm sorry, where'd it go? Oh, yeah, okay, so um, how many of you guys like typically put your books up for pre-order on Amazon whenever you, yeah, I do that too because I mean there's a lot of you know tips that, like tricks you can do with your promotions and stuff like that. So um, this one time, we got a contract with a book and those, um, the contract stated that we only could publish this particular title in the UK. The, another publisher had the, the US rights. And so me not knowing that there would be a different process at this point, got with my VA and told her, okay, here's the, here's the deal with the territories. And she said, okay. And she went to do our whole setup, like how we typically upload our, e our eBooks when we go wide with them. And whenever she tried to adjust the territories, it was either BNN or Kobo or maybe both of them said no. Since this isn't being published in the US and you're only publishing um, eBooks wide through to uh, certain um, countries, like um, internationally instead of internationally and US, they wouldn't do our pre-orders. So there was a lesson learned, it's one to log, like if you ever end up with that as a publisher, you can't, you can't publish your, um, your eBooks to different territories without publishing them to US too. So what we did, and the takeaway there is um, aggregators. We, we used um, Draft2Digital and we published the, um, we published the ebook through, through Draft to digital and they were able to put it up for pre-orders through any of the um, bookstores that said that they weren't going to do it because it was, it was uh, UK only. So that's how we fixed that. Um, there's a, one other thing, one other oddity that I found. I currently work for a press and we take, um, we take these like uh, books that are in the public domain, like I think the last one that we did was a Bram Stoker book. And um, of course it's in the public domain, so you have the right to you know, reprint it. And we came up with a gorgeous cover and everything and we're, we're getting ready to, uh, to put it up for, for pre-order. And it turns out that Amazon, no matter where you are, will not publish something that's a work that's in the public domain for pre-orders. They just won't do it. And so we were unaware of this. Um, I tried researching afterward too, and I didn't really find a whole lot you know, on, on the KDP sites or, or anything about this. But that sort of threw our whole you know, promotional plan for that title for a loop. So if you're planning on doing something like that, be sure and like check it out ahead of time because they will totally ruin your, <laughs> ruin your um, promotional efforts. Um, so uh, one other th thing that we did, um, we, had, uh, we had a problem with taking, taking some, uh, some books down. And I'm not telling you these horror stories like to just scare you off from publishing wide. There's still like the huge benefit from publishing your book wide. But we tried to take one down from wide, wide um, distribution so that we could put it up in KDP. And we tried to take another one down at the same time because uh, the rights were reverting to an author. So we took them all down and we had the confirmations from all the websites and everything. And I got a hold of the author and I said, your, your book is down, go ahead and you know, proceed as you, as you wanted to. Well, two weeks later, I get an angry email and he's like, the book is still up on Apple. And sure enough, we went over and looked and the book is still for sale on Apple, even though we had the confirmation email and everything that had been removed from publication. And so um, we, we did this at the same time with a book in KDP. I had put one title up in KDP. Sure enough, that one was still showing up on Apple. So KDP sent me an angry email about how, you know, giving me the whole rigmarole about how you can't have your books up um, any other place, eBooks only, of course, any other place if you want to take advantage of Kindle Select or KDP Select. So I assured them that I would have the book removed within 24 hours, which was their deadline. I couldn't do it. Apple said that they had taken it down. Any aggregator, I mean, nobody had a trace of those files that they said were live. So KDP sent me an email within 24 hours and said, <laughs> we're pulling your book from KU. 
and it was because of, of Apple, who somehow found it in their hearts to take the, the book down the next day. So that was, that was interesting. It's also something to look out for, like whenever you wanna go um, taking your books in and out of, of KU. So, let's see. Okay, tip number four. Publishing to Amazon through Draft2Digital or another, or another aggregator. I love aggregators. I am a huge fan of Draft2Digital and Publish Drive too. But um, so we were doing this program this one time where we were publishing. We we took on a, a cluster of books and we were publishing them straight um, to Amazon. Well, not straight to Amazon, but Amazon also with Draft2Digital, our aggregator. And um, so no other bookstores that, that draft to digital works with gave draft to digital a hard time except Amazon. So we had to fill out this big long questionnaire about you know, everything that we had going on in publishing and we had to give draft to digital our permission to publish through Amazon. And that's fine. That was something that was recorded with draft to digital and it was like two or three emails, which at that point I was okay. So then we started uploading our books. One of them of course was in the public domain. They sent back another questionnaire through draft to digital and this one was like three pages long and we had to list everything about the, the public domain works. Um, how many times they've been published, the death date of the author, just so many things like that. And then finally, they went ahead and published the book and they wouldn't allow me to link the product pages on Amazon because it was published through another book and there were already print books out through Ingram. So they're still not linked for this one, tape, one um, title and Amazon does not like to play nice when you sell your eBooks through an aggregator. So that's something to look out for. And if you don't mind sending a couple emails, I'm not saying they're not gonna do it, but the next time that we tried to do it, they refused the book and it was another public, public domain work. So yeah, sometimes they'll, um, they'll go ahead and, and work with you and then other times they will just take their ball and go home because they're Amazon and they can. So um, that was like a big lesson learned. Um, it changed like every way that we, we published the older books there. And um, okay, so that leads us to the differences in um, hardcover offerings from KDP and, um, and Ingram Spark. So I'm gonna start with Ingram Spark. And um, I don't know if you're already aware, like does anybody have a hardcover book up on Ingram Spark? Have they already, have you guys already moved to hardcovers? So that, um, I highly suggest checking out Ingram Spark for your print on demand hardcovers. They do a beautiful job. The product is superior to KDP at this time, but KDP is always changing and trying, you know, to, to come up with the same kind of product. But if you're interested in sending your books to libraries or to um, like bookstores, bookstores and libraries really love that finished product with a nice um, dust jacket on it. And it, it just, you know, it helps the book take a couple more, you know, knocks around and, and that sort of stuff. And it just looks better too. They offer, you know, you can either put your case bind under it so you have like that color image like your trade paperback or whatever, or you can just, you know, pick your um, standard gray cloth or your blue cloth. And so it's just, it's really, when you're holding it in your hand, it's a superior product. But KDP is very young in this. I think they just made the announcement that they're, they're able to do hard covers to everybody, but they ran a six or eight month beta program and I was part of that, that beta program. Um, the first book I uploaded, it all went really well. You have to get another cover file, so you have to get a case bind um, done, which is like if you're doing a dust jacket and then you also have to do a case bind and then you also have to do your trade paperback wrap. So keep that in mind. If you wanna go that route, your cover designer has to complete three different kinds um, of files there. But we stuck one of the books up into their hardcover program and ordered it and it turned out really, really great. The, um, the binding is good, um, but it's only the case bind on top. So what that means is it's, co it's color, like it was you know, your trade paperback cover or whatever, but it, it just doesn't look, they don't do dust jackets. And to, to this day, it is my understanding that they don't distribute to libraries either. So keep that in mind. If libraries are important to you, I don't think you can get the um, KDP hardcovers um, distributed to libraries through there, but they don't use dust jackets. So what you end up with is like, um, it kind of looks like a high school uh, 
textbook, maybe, or something, you know, with the, the color and, and, and stuff like that on the cover, which isn't a bad thing, and then I guess you don't have to worry about a dust jacket getting trashed out. But when you first receive it, it's, it's really not the best looking, <laughs> the best looking product um, compared to Ingram Spark. So those are really good um, print on demand options if you're wanting to, to go wide with your, your print books. Um, oh, okay, so all is not like totally wonderful doing it that way because we have, we have a huge difference in the fact that um, KDP does not charge to, to upload files to do your books. Uh, Ingram Spark, you, you will pay them um, $25 or $49 to do to do a hardcover and then um, another, you know, another set of those two fees to upload your trade paperback and your interior files. So, you know, if you're going to do with Ingram Spark, if you're going to do both of those, then you're going to end up paying like $100 to do all of your print there. So that's the one downside. Um, but like I said, I like to do that just because of the way the books look. They look really good. Um, KDP, they're free. Um, the print cost is similar. KDP is just a little bit cheaper but not enough um, you know, to, to convince me to move away from print on demand at Ingram Spark because of the way the way the books look. They just, they're really beautiful. Okay, so like I was talking about before, if you're looking forward to sending your books to libraries, um, Ingram Spark is probably the best bet for POD. Um, I'm looking every day pretty much to see if KDP offers distribution to libraries because that would be a pretty good game changer for, for quite a few people that I know. Um, another thing with Ingram, um, so let me see, about 10 minutes ago, they, or 10 months ago, they sent an email to us all saying they were going to raise their prices a little bit and cited, you know, things like COVID and paper prices going up and, you know, all the same stuff. And so we had to change prices on all of our books. And currently we have about 400 books um, up for sale through Ingram. And only a few of them were affected in that the price was no longer like good for us. We were gonna take a, a pretty good hit you know, when, it come, when it came to the print cost and, and, and this price increase. Because with Ingram, you choose the 55% discount so that they will offer your books to libraries and bookstores at a discount. It's the, it's the way they do their wholesale mo um, model. So it's a good thing to do for that kind of distribution. But when you have the same hardcover on KDP that you just published on Ingram Spark, the 55% discount makes you, it, it starts the need, you, you have to raise the prices of your book. So like a 350 page book, that is hardly a brick, it's not a huge book, you still have to charge like $38.99 for it on Ingram Spark to cover that 55% um, discount. But if KDP starts doing dust jackets on their hardcovers, then there is a really good answer for that as long as they, you know, they have the good um, continuing dis distribution to libraries and bookstores. At this time, I just don't think they're gonna do it um, right away. So that's the pricing volatilities um, that I have marked there. Okay, so whenever, whichever one of these two you pick to create your hardcovers, um, KDP has a really neat template um, online. You can find it really easily when you're inside your KDP account. Um, and you can generate your, your template cover and it's, it's really easy, it's a pretty slick little tool. And then, um, in an answer to that, Ingram Spark created you know, their tool. It actually wasn't an answer. I think that Ingram Sparks was, was up there first, but they augmented it whenever KDP decided to get into hardcovers. And so now, um, you can find both of those tools easily online. And um, Ingram's is a little bit more robust in that you can put a price in there and it'll tell you to the penny, you know, exactly what you need to do as far as which discount and things like that because, you know, libraries, bookstores, that kind of fun stuff. So I think the takeaway there is probably um, check out, you know, your future publishing model and see what you want to pay, what, you know, what your budget is like. If you're okay paying Ingram Spark, you know, for the upload fees. I know that um, in our newsletter here with 20 books, Craig has been circulating that free code for Ingram Spark uploads. That is a huge resource. Right now they work from month to month, but that could save you, you know, depending on if you want to wait and save your titles until you have one of those codes that'll work for a month, I highly recommend it. You're going to end up with, with really gorgeous books doing it that way. 
and that's something really cool that's exclusive, you know, to, to 20 bucks. So, all right, next. Tip number six. Has anybody here heard of Bookshop? This is a really unique way of going wide with your print books. So after you have your print books, you should check out Bookshop because um, I think we all kind of like have a soft spot for indie bookstores. And Bookshop, it's um, a distributor exclusively for your favorite indie bookstores. They don't worry about the big, huge stores like you know maybe Barnes and Noble or whatever. Or if it's a small town, they would probably go ahead and work with a Barnes and Noble for an author. But I highly suggest going ahead and checking out Bookshop because when you invest your time and your resources into having these books created and you're going wide with your your print as well, you'll want to discover these resources so that you can have the biggest outreach and the biggest place you know the biggest places put together within your plan so that you know you're not just leaving some part of the market out. And indie bookstores are a really, really important part of, of, uh, of like any distribution. You should be able to, to find your favorite in your small town and, and get started there. And they probably work with Bookshop. So that was one of my favorite tips. <laughs> OK, so if, um, if you're ever wanting to use an aggregator like Draft or Digital or something like this. This slide is basically about what I have found that works pretty well. So um, you, you can make the decision when you decide to go wide, are you going to still publish to Amazon Direct? Are you gonna publish to Barnes & Noble Direct? You know, are you gonna publish to Kobo Direct? I recommend publishing direct to those three um, booksellers that I just mentioned. The reason you should publish direct um, through Amazon is because they don't play well with others, okay? And and also they're they're Amazon. There's a whole bunch of, you know, different perks to working with Amazon. Um, Barnes and Noble. We just like to continue to work directly with Barnes and Noble. Um, we find that we have a huge bunch of Nook readers, and we we don't want to do anything that might change that interaction because they know that they've been able to come to um, Barnes and Noble, you know, and and find every single one of our titles. And I don't want to do anything to to um, create any problems there. And then Kobo, oh my gosh, Kobo has the most beautiful bunch of offerings. And their promos, the promos that they send out, like they're always doing wonderful promos. So I really suggest to check out going into um, publishing with your eBooks with Kobo Direct. Their e-reader, like every year they come out with a new e-reader. And this e-reader that they just came out with, you can like write on the screen and it's kind of big and stuff. And I, I mean, I just kind of want one. But they're, um, they have, uh, the kind of platform where you can um, publish any, you know, any of your books there, and uh, it's their dashboard is a lot easier to work with, as far as like maybe Smashwords or something like that. So that is my, that's my suggestion. Okay, and get an aggregator to hit the rest of the stores. Um, my suggestions are based on things that have happened when I'm trying to work with 400 titles with wide distribution. And if you're like me, you don't have a level boatload of time to sit around and you know answer every single email from, from every, single, every single website about every single book. So we do use aggregators and, and it turned out to be a really good deal. Okay. Okay, let me see. Okay, yeah, we're gonna talk about aggregators now. Um, the first one that I want to talk about, well, firstly, I want to add Ingram Spark to this list. For some reason, I hadn't added it in there. Um, I just recently did some more research. If you want to use Ingram Spark as an aggregator, you can. You can upload your ebooks there, and they will distribute your ebooks just in the same way that they distribute your, your, um, your hardcovers and your, your um, trade paperbacks. It's, it's kind of a beautiful thing. So. Do your research there and check out, you know, if you're thinking about just picking one aggregator and like having everything up there, it, it might be a pretty good deal. I have not tried it, but their um, offerings are growing more and more robust in the ebook markets, so check that out. Um, as I said before, my all-time favorite aggregator is draft to digital they have wonderful reps. Their dashboard is completely cake to use. They run tons of promos all the time. They um, started a program where if you're wanting to put together an anthology, um, 
every author in the anthology can do a royalty split within the dashboard in Draft2Digital. So if you're a publisher, you don't have to worry about splitting off royalties. Draft2Digital will do that for you. They did also just start creating print books, and they're doing a great job. Um, I hear tell they might you know, get into hardbacks. If that is the case, they would be a wonderful tool and very powerful and probably give Ingram Spark a run for their money when it came to like the different formats of print that you can have. Publish Drive is growing. So um, the reason that I started looking at Publish Drive is because the press that I was working for, we were looking for a way to reach unique markets in China. And um, at the time, like, Amazon was really fluctuating with publishing to China. There was a lot going on. So um, I started looking into Publish Drive after a, a friend told me to check it out. And when I did, I looked at the stores that they offer, and they offer really unique stores, like markets that I have never been able to find before. And China is a huge market for eBooks. So um, I don't use just one aggregator. I use Smashwords and draft to digital and also Publish Drive. The reason I use Publish Drive right now, like I said, is, is the unique markets. I think there's like one in Hungary and things like that. So check those out if you're looking to reach out you know, to, to specialty um, places. Just because they're specialty or like something you haven't heard of does not mean they're a small market. China is a huge market. So I like to go through them, uh, through Publish Drive for those. Um, let me see, Smashwords. So I think Smashwords was probably the original aggregator. Back in the day, it was a tool that everybody was just so wild about. And um, I don't think they've ever updated their dashboard, I think, is one of the biggest reasons that I don't currently use them for a whole lot. We do still have like our 400 titles up there, but I have selected down different stores um, where they seem to perform a little bit better than draft to digital or public drive or publish drive. Publish drive just started um, trade paperbacks, so you can upload your trade paperback books there. And they're another one. If you if you're thinking about just publishing everything through one aggregator, check out Publish Drive because their offerings are growing and growing and growing, and it is super duper easy to upload a book there. I mean, it's it's super quick and super easy. So definitely check them out. Um, and draft to digital, you know, of course, they've, they've been getting into uh, trade paperbacks for a little while. Neither draft to digital um, nor publish drive right now do hardbacks, so we're still we're still using um, Ingram Spark for for our hardbacks, but they make them real pretty, so we'll keep doing that. Okay, tip number nine. I just added a bunch of these, so I have to keep looking at my notes. <laughs> Okay, so um, this one is all about um, ebooks to libraries. And I'm also, after this, I'm going to start talking about print books to libraries, which is a huge, huge deal. Ebooks to libraries is actually a huge deal, also. To do this, we use Draft to Digital. Um, in my experience, Draft to Digital has the most robust um, offerings when it comes to, to offering your books to libraries. They have OverDrive, and OverDrive is a powerhouse. Most libraries out there will have an OverDrive account. So if you're friends with a librarian or you want to try to get your local library to have your books, go in and talk to somebody there. Um, that also works for bookstores. But go in and, and talk to the librarian and say, you know, all my stuff is up on OverDrive. If you guys have an account, I'd like to talk to you about what's there. And, they are very receptive. Um, local libraries, local bookstores, they actually do want to hear from local authors. So pursue that. That's another means of distributing your stuff wide. Um, if you're going to go in, you know, go, go all in, dive in and get every, every bit of it that you can out of it. Um, so that's how we do our libraries with ebooks. And that actually turns out to be a really good way to do schools as well. We have, um, I published a child's book. Um, a picture book, gosh, it's been almost two years now, and the um, Chicago School District wanted to buy 1,500 copies of my ebook, and it was um, put up through draft to digital to OverDrive, and that's how the school district found my book. It's an anti-bullying book, so they were just able to go in and do a search, you know, for that kind of thing that they wanted to offer their kids, and they did, and 1,500 ebooks, you know, at 4.99 a piece. I was I was pretty tickled plum pink with that. 
So that's the kind of opportunity that you're opening up for yourself when you do a little bit of research and go and, and upload your books there. Um, okay, so let's talk about distributing your, your um, hardcovers to libraries. There is a process, and I'm just gonna give you a quick rundown because I could do a whole other talk on the process of getting your books actually into libraries. So the first thing that you wanna do before publication, this takes a lot of planning, but before you go wide with your print, you want to be in contact with the Library of Congress. The, longer, the Library of Congress does have that huge library, and whenever librarians or school teachers or anybody else go to look on their website, they will have your book listed there. And it's just the same as like anywhere else with keywords and whatnot. You can, you can add the, the metadata there so that they can find your book. So that's the first thing you wanna do is be in touch with the Library of Congress, have your books um, online there, and of course you're gonna have to send them a hardback or a trade paper back, whatever the best edition is, and um, they'll have it listed there. And then after that, go ahead and make sure that you publish your eBooks through draft to digital or another aggregator. Like I said, draft to digital does it best in my experience. And then um, consider putting together a PDF of a catalog that you, you know, of all of your publications, everything that you have to offer for libraries, anything that you put together in, in a jacketed hardcover is a, is a great candidate. And then you can circulate your catalog. You can either print it out as a little printable, you know, book, or you can um, send a PDF, send emails. That's something that we resorted to do um, during COVID. So yeah, we, it, it worked like a charm and now we have quite a few libraries, you know, they email us back. We also set up something on our website and um, it has different packages available for libraries. Like if they just wanna get a one-off or something like that, or they wanna get like everything that you offer in sci-fi or a certain series, you can break it down pretty much any way like that and, and it works really well. So that's one thing to try. Um, libraries tend to be pretty luc lucrative because people get, you know, hooked on new authors and stuff that way. Okay, trip num tip number 10. Did you say that was 10 minutes or 15? 13, <laughs> okay, thanks. Shoot, I'm gonna try to go fast so that we can do some Q&A. Um, all right, yeah, so we covered that one. Okay, so this quote is something that means a lot to me. In school, you are taught a lesson and then given a test. In life, you are given a test that teaches you a lesson. And I think that when you take, you trust yourself enough to take your books off of just Amazon and send them out into the big wide world, you're looking to learn some lessons. And that's what this talk was all about, is like I wasn't trying to, to lecture on how to do your eBooks wide, I just wanted you to have in the back of your mind some of these pitfalls so that when you're out there and you're trying to upload your library and go live, live you won't, you know, you won't run into this. Um, I encourage you to do your research. Um, go to conferences like 20 Books and Superstars. Go there and talk, you know, network with other authors, net, network with the industry professionals because the offerings are always, they just keep coming for publishing wide. So a lot of research, join different, like um, Kindrepreneur, join Dave's newsletter. He's sending out wonderful stuff all the time. Just that's an, another example of how I find just little tools that make things so much easy, easier for me as a publisher managing a huge, a huge catalog. Okay, I think we can take like 10 minutes worth of questions. And um, if you have any questions, please come up to the mic because um, they're recording and they wanna be able to, to get anybody's um, voice on the recording. If not, I'll just tell you how you can find me. Hi. Hi. Um, if I have my hardback on Ingram and then I decide to put that into KDP, what happens on Amazon to the hardback from Ingram? Do they not ever sell it anymore? They do sell it, um, but of course there's a linking issue. Um, they will link their, their hardcover before they link anybody else's. And um, so what's gonna end up being linked is the hardcover that doesn't have the dust jacket on it. But you will have a linked hardcover and, and KDP is aggressive. So it'll be linked to your ebook and all the reviews and everything will transfer to all the formats. Good and bad stuff there. <laughs> hey, I've been on Ingram Spark for about a year and I've been happy with the results. Um, do you have any advice for getting to know your customers? You know, I'm selling, let's say, 
2,000 books on there a month or something, but I have no idea where these are going, and I would uh -huh. like to know, you know, or, and support yeah. the customer. <laughs> so um, the thing with Ingram Spark is they're majorly a wholesaler, and it's hard to find out, you know, exactly where they're going. I think you can look at iPage, and you might be, like if you start up an Ingram iPage account, you might be able to see like what market they went to and a number, but that's really not gonna tell you, you know, a whole lot, unfortunately. Just watch your numbers, and if you're selling 2,000 books a month on Ingram, congratulations. <laughs> You had mentioned that um, Barnes and Noble, you had said that they're, it's good to have a direct account with them. Yeah. But I had heard really terrible things about how hard they are to work with and their customer service sucks and blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, I didn't do it. I went through D2D. Um, yeah. do, is that not true or is it exaggerated? What are we thinking? Yeah, um, there, we've had issues with their customer service. We have. Um, it hasn't been horrible. Like some of these places, I've had some horrible incidents with some of their customer service reps and it didn't end well for either one of us. So um, yeah, we've had, we've had bad times um, with Barnes & Noble, but the good outweighs the bad. We still like to, we still like to work with them directly. Um, they, they seem to be, so we stopped working with Apple. I took Apple off of our wide distribution list and now I turned them on on draft to digital for those kinds of reasons. Plus, I'm not a Mac, okay? So I have to have a VA do all of my work with Apple. And their customer service went straight down the porcelain pee hole. Like, we can't get anybody to help us over there. So, um, you know, if Barnes & Noble gets to that point, that's what we'll end up, end up doing. But so far, they're still, like, on our, our happy list. So you mentioned that you use all those three aggregators, the draft to digital Smashwords, Publish Drive. When you are putting your books on there, do you publish them all equally on all of those? Like you kind of mentioned a little bit that you do it slightly differently. I'd just like to hear yes. more about that if you could. Sure, yeah. So if you look at all of the bookstores and all the markets that are available from all three of those, um, those aggregators, a lot of them are repeats. So what you wanna do is check out who's gonna be more aggressive for you and then divide it up. Like if you're gonna publish to Overdrive and Baker and Taylor, through draft to digital, don't do it on Smashwords, of course, and then don't do it, you know, on Publish Drive. For that reason, we only like I've only got um, a few stores opened up on Publish Drive. I've got this many stores opened up on draft to digital, and then I've only got this many stores opened up on Smashwords. And because in my experience, draft to digital is much more aggressive, and um, and they do a lot better with promos. I have a couple of uh, details with uh, Ingram Spark that I'd like to share because I, it, it, all my hardbacks go through Ingram Spark. Yeah. Uh, I've had a couple of occasions where they've sent uh, they've sent hardbacks with the correct dust jacket and the wrong book inside. <laughs> I've had some things happen too. That, that's been entertaining to <laughs> say the least. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is some covers, some of the dust jackets, you have a barcode on the back that includes the price. If they force you to change the price, you're also gonna have to change the dust jacket yes. and re-upload it, which will incur another updating fee for the new it dust will. jacket as well. And I have some information on you about that. Yes, um, like eight months ago, Ingram raised their price, okay? Then on November 6th, they raised their prices again. So the best way to do this, if you ever have to take one of your books down and put a new cover on it because you printed your cover on your book, don't put prices on your books anymore. Okay, not with KDP and not with draft to digital and don't do it with Ingram either because you never know, like pricing is volatile right now with COVID and paper prices and everything. If you can, you know, and make sure the prices are embedded in your, um, in your barcode too. And that way all you have to do is go into any of the dashboards and raise the prices. And so again, to help you out, like if you have to change, if you have to re-upload a new dust jacket or a new cover, um, use the monthly, upload um, codes that we're getting here. And then also, if you email um, Ingram, you know, and say, hey, I have 10 titles there or something like that, and I really need to talk to somebody, um, I don't wanna pay for all these fees because you raised your price, there's a really good chance they're gonna send you enough upload load codes to uh, fix your stuff, okay? I've got um, um, quite a few books in, in KU, and uh, scared to death that if I was to pull them out of KU and go wide, I'd make a big chunk of my income go away. Yeah. Um, 
Is that is it is it a gamble that you're yes. thinking in terms of that it's a good thing? Or I mean, you can ignite a firestorm in any for forum when you ask, do you do this or do you do that? Then you get yeah. people on both sides. Just yeah, um, you know, there's good and bad, and I I think it takes a lot of uh, a lot of moxie to jump off that way, and the thing with uh, some of your books are going to do great staying right where they are. The big monster series and stuff like that that you have out there. Um, you know, they might do well just keeping them in, in KDP Select. But if, you, if you're like, you have a one-off, like a standalone novel or something like that, I would totally go wide with something like that because you don't have that series benefit that you have with KU. You know what I mean? So, um, like, if you're a publisher and you're publishing different authors and stuff, depending on how aggressive and how productive this author is, you know, if they're turning out series and stuff like that, I think we're about done, then, uh, you know, you have to make that decision whether that trackability with that series, you know, if you can sacrifice that yeah. and, and just look in the long run. The, the good thing is, if you decide to just try a couple books, you can go right back. Like, say it doesn't work or something like that. Take a book that you want to experiment with, start your research, stick it up there wide, do like all of the little things that we just talked about with like bookshop and, um, and scribe count. Oh my gosh, I forgot about scribe count. This is where scribe count would really help because you can measure all of your sales from all of the sites within one app now. You can look that up at scribecount.com and that would be a really great tool because for whatever, you know, tester book that you sent wide, you can measure, you know, what what one book is doing up against the one that it, you, you sent out wide. But if you're looking to get your titles into libraries and, and things like that, that's when you really do need to check out wide distribution, um, you know, and, and possibly use Ingram. But like I said, the, the eBooks, like where you're making your big money on KDP with your eBooks and stuff, you can still put up a, a jacketed hardcover on Ingram Spark and it's not gonna touch your ebooks on on um, KDP Select. Which, by the way, I did think I'd mention that too. I I was really happy with my KDP hardbacks. I mean, it looked to me like the print quality was much higher on the on the hardbacks than it is on the paperbacks. So yeah, yeah, they 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 have really good binding and stuff. The thing that I don't like is uh, no dust jackets because just the product. Yeah, it's kind of missing that. But I think they're going to catch up. I think they're going to start doing dust jackets. Oh, yeah. And you know, another thought: if you really want your books to have dust jackets, go ahead and place an order through KDP, and then go to your print shop, have somebody help you make up a dust jacket, you know, and have a bunch printed up, put them on your books, and then you know, to the for um, con conventions or you know, if you sell at cons or whatever, you have your dust jackets. And if you want to distribute through home, go ahead and order your hard hard covers through KDP. Save that money. Don't worry about that huge honking discount that you have to pay over at Ingram Spark. And then if you have the room in your home or your garage or something like that to have some of your books around, that's a really good way around that. I've got all of mine in hardback and so far I've sold zero. So good oh. on you. <laughs> Stick with it. <laughs> I think you mentioned uh, that a hardback requires three files. Which files are those? Okay, so it for sure requires two if you just want to do the cloth beneath the dust jacket. Then you only have to do two. So you have to do a dust jacket file and you um, have to do your trade paperback file. That, that wrap, they're just different. They're, they're a lot different. There's a lot of information that, of course, goes on a dust jacket that's not on a, on a trade paperback. So if you want to select, like especially with kids' books, if you want to opt for the case-bound laminate beneath your dust jacket on Ingram, that's when you're going to need a case bind. But the beauty there is if you're doing both, if you're putting them up on KDP, you're doing hardbacks there, you have to have that case bind file to have a hardback for KDP. So take that case bind file and use it on Ingram. And that way you don't have to pay your cover designer, you know, to create a third. But if you want to do it that way, you do have to have those three files, case bind, dust jacket, and trade paperback. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. We just have, what, like a minute? Can't really read that very well. Yeah, not quite a minute, but. Okay, well, if anybody doesn't have anything else, I'll just sacrifice the last 30 seconds or so and we can take off and go get coffee. <laughs> Thanks.